What is up guys, my board. Welcome to our week 3 battle against the most fantastic people I know, Xenon. And yeah, I mean, going into this match here, if you see my team analysis, I was fearing Meanwhile and Metagross. They are not a part of this team. So the first thing that dawned on me was that my Thunderous is kind of useless. It's, it's not useless though, but it's not as effective as I wanted it to be. I did optimize for hidden power fighting because uh, on my Thunderous because I was thinking that that's the only guaranteed kill I need. Not needing it, kind of bad, like, kind of, kind of, feel that, that this is not gonna work. But outside of that, I don't see a lot of mods that are weak to Stealth Rocks either, which means that I don't necessarily need to set up Stealth Rocks with this match. I do see Ninetales and Tornadoes, but they can be dealt with with Donphan in another fashion. So, with that said, I decided here to lead, of course, with Donphan, but not necessarily go for Rocks. So we're gonna go for aggressive play due to me having Lumberry, or at least so I thought. I should say, going into this game, uh, I switched items between Scissor and um, Dogman, so Scissor has uh, Lumberry and um, Dogman has Akaberry. Pretty fucking sweet. So, you know, I, I realized that halfway through the game, so that, that's a factor I'm just gonna mention. Uh, but outside of that, this team looks still scary, it still was really hard to design for, and uh, I basically need to break course. And uh, it looks like you took the defensive route against me, and that is an effective route. And I just need to play aggressive enough to break that asunder. So, really, with all this said, let's go. So, he's gonna lead up with Tentacruel. So, I was feeling that, you know what? Since I have Lumberry, I can easily go for an earthquake here. Skull won't kill me since I've stirred in all. Uh, which also, I don't have Lumberry. I have that in mind. So, I went for earthquake trying to kill him. He goes for Rectify Dragon. There is really not a whole lot I can do to Hydreigon outside of knockoff, but feeling that it's very likely it could just go for heavy damage on me. Gardevoir is actually a solid pick, because I kind of want to scout out what kind of damage it does to me, whether it's Life Force, Specs, Scarf, and it goes to Flamethrower, and that shows me one thing at least. It is not Scarf, uh, or it's not <laughs> it's not Life Orb or Specs. It doesn't really do a heavy amount of damage on me. And I go for Psy Shocker, thinking that I will definitely switch out, not want to take a Moonblast. Go for the Tornadoes! And that Tornadoes has a few HP investment on it, because I am modest max attack and that didn't really do too much. Uh, so fearing that he might go actually go for Sludge Wave here, I was thinking I'd go for Thunderous, since Thunderous is, well, my least value mon in this matchup. And uh, he goes for U-turn, so pretty solid choice from him. And uh, he's gonna go to Hydreigon, so I think, alright, I'm gonna scout him now. Is he Assault Vested, maybe? And uh, he's not max speed, since I am not max speed, so... Um, that is interesting, but he's bulky, because that was supposed to do around 50%, that didn't really do a whole lot. So, and the damage output is still high, but it shows me at least, it's not scarfed, it's not speedy, and uh, Jonathan can deal with this properly after rock polish, I had that in mind, like, I was feeling, you know, I, I can do well here. Uh, so I guess the dragon has switched out to Lissa, knowing that most likely, or at best, could go for Dragon Pulse and kind of kick me back. Uh, but we're not having seen Flash Cannon, Flash Cannon does, will not do over 50% on me. Uh, fearing that it definitely would switch out, I decided to go for Ice Wind since we have a few mods that are faster. So he goes to Tornado, so that works for me because that means we can outspeed it next turn. And that's something I know that he doesn't really want me to do. Because, uh, well, I hurt. I really, really hurt him. So I was a bit surprised to see him staying in here. Seeing that I went for Ice Wind, so I would outspeed. I am so close to carrying here. Uh, he goes to Sludge Bomb, and that does a lot of damage, but not enough. Definitely not enough. And he's gonna switch out to his Hiroyama here as I went for a Moonblast. I went for a Psy Shock, it actually would have killed this thing, so I'm feeling that might have been overdoing it. But yeah, I go for the Moonblast, and I'm just gonna stop a bit here. Against this matchup, I actually won't be KO'd by a Bullet Punch. I had that in mind. Bullet Punch does at best. I do believe that was 87 damage on me, which means I would survive it. But I was thinking, you know, he's forced to go for a Bullet Punch to kill me. So, it would be fair to assume that I would have been able to switch out right and uh, soak that with uh, my uh, Heracross and basically go from there. Like, Heracross would have been a very, very smart switch in here for this situation. It would also, since I have very, very, very likely to switch into something more defensive, such a Dauphin at this point. So, yeah, let's see what happens. So, like I said, I do switch out here. I'm going for Heracross basically to soak whatever move it goes for and then retaliate him. And, um, he goes for a Fire Punch. But that would have meant that he, in theory, would sacking up his Hiriyama, right? 
at least so I was thinking. So I went for a knockoff here, seeing that Rotom is a very, very clear choice of actually dealing with my um, Heracross perfectly, if anything. So knockoff is my choice. <laughs> I was really thinking, all right, uh, he actually decides to stay in here, goes for a bullet punch, which, you know, in theory is not too bad because I can't survive it, but he just stay in. And I was like, what are you doing? And, you know, what, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> why am I not killing this thing? So obviously Knockoff will not kill this thing, so I of course need to switch out this time. And knowing that he has to go for a bullet punch to kill my Heracross and to have speed, I decide here to actually switch into Volcano, which definitely can soak this hit if anything. So I was feeling, you know what? This is gonna work. This is exactly what I have to work with. But you gotta be kidding me! What the hell are you doing? And what am I doing? Like, are we gonna play this game? I'm... Ah! So I now wheel down two of my more effective mods against him. Um, flame Charge will take him out, so if you see my set, you know I have Flame Charge superpower, because Volcanion does bait him both Tentacruel and Hydreigon, so I know that if I cannot speed him, it's all a guarantee that Hydreigon is not speedier uh, than my Thunder, so I will outspeed him easily here, and then I can follow that up with a superpower. Now I know that I would probably not kill him and die in the process, but he actually goes for a Torment here. Which is nice, I mean, this was a clear indication that he would have taken me out, but he missed that out, and uh, that's alright. I can deal with that. Uh, and I'm gonna retaliate with a steam eruption, and he switched out to the Tentacruel, and as I said before, Volcanion does bait these both really well, and uh, this damage pretty much shows me that this is a Salt Vest, this has to be a Salt Vest. Uh, so we do get burned, because <laughs> we're all Volcanion after all, and uh, since we're out speeding anyway, I can safely go for now an Earthquake. Now, I am at minus one, which means I definitely won't kill him. But, you know, I push him down to that sweet spot. And while Volcanion doesn't necessarily get a kill here, uh, it did break asunder the two mods that would effectively uh, stop my team from what I'm now going to try to create, which is, I can't really stress this enough, bringing in Tusk, the Dark Fan, because now... I can't take a possible Skull, but since it switched out against me previously, it's very likely it doesn't have Skull. And I can safely go for Rock Polish, and now I speed his whole team. Boom. And uh, actually Volcano will get a kill through the bird, so you know, that's kinda cool, Volcano at least get a kill. <laughs> Though Darwin would just have picked that one up at this next turn anyway. Uh, so anyway, he's gonna go to Hollow Static, which shows me that probably he's Scarf, so he will outspeed. But you know, I'm still a Darwin fan, which means I'm pretty darn bulky. And we can retaliate back with a knockoff. So that's Rotom out of the way. Uh, really surprised his Rotom was scoffed this battle. I was really, really sure it would bring something more ha heavy hitting. But Scarf works. Scarf really works. Uh, so going to Shabby Nox, which of course with a bullet punch can force us down a little bit more. But definitely won't kill because we're still down, which means we're pretty darn bulky still. And uh, yeah, that's hit. Um, I was gonna say Hitmon Chan, but that's um, yeah, Hitmon Fats. If anything, <laughs> it's gonna go out. So you know, no issue still. And now we got Tornadoes. Now, Tornadoes will be KO'd at this range. So I was thinking, alright, we gotta get this. But no, he's of course gonna utilize his Regenerator. And yeah, that that's kinda sad. That's kinda gonna actually stop the Jonathan Rampage, sadly. But it does get three kills here, which is nice. But yeah, since he actually is now at a 75% area of HP, we won't be able to kill him actually close to night, actually. Uh, this knockoff still does a lot of damage, but like I said, it's a 50% hit, and it sadly is not enough. I, I should have definitely optimized for a core stone edge, but I really need to knock off this battle for Rotom, and I really don't like the chance of missing, so we do miss out of, of course, Stompin' here. But we can snag that Regenerator, which is all we need here, and I'm gonna bait him for course going for that Sludge Bomb and uh, switch into Core Scissor. Still Regenerator was pretty much the idea I needed here. And I go to the Theta Max, and uh, what I should have done here is actually gone for a Bullet Punch. I don't really know what went through my head, because I still got 9 Tails, and the way it preserved it tells me that it's very likely to be a Focus Sash set. Uh, which is kind of intimidating, because I don't... or I still can beat it with both Heracross and Gardevoir if that is the case. But I'm actually forcing down my Gardevoir here to the same amount of HP it was before the Regenerator go, and even worse actually thinking about it. So, yeah, I should just go for Bullet Punch for Scissor. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that. I guess I was kind of bummed that Dauphin didn't work the way I was hoping for, though it did break a southern steam real nicely. So, Nidals comes in here. I decided to um, 
to switch and scissor here to take of course the incoming flamethrower because I can't take it under the sun luckily um, but he will go for a nasty plot here which is good uh, because that means that if he has a sash I break it which is actually kinda nice and it's not scarf which is also nice uh, so we break it here the nasty plot means that you know it will kill me anyway uh, with a flamethrower heatwave it goes for heatwave and the, heat, the Akebara doesn't pop and I was like why? Uh, I still would die to it, but I kind of, oh no, I <laughs> lumber on the scissor, what the hell? Uh, but anyway, we do have speed here, and Alpha Max can just come in and wrap things up, and uh, I am very, very, very lucky to come out on top of this game, because I did so well in the beginning, but, wow, like the Hariyama just threw me off so hard, and, <laughs> wow, Xenon, wow. All right, some afterthoughts. Can, can we can we talk about that Hiriyama situation? Can we do that? I I, I kind of wanna like I wanna defend myself for it, but at the same time, I, while I'm looking at it now, I'm like, what the hell? Uh, to, to to be frank here, Hiriyama's bullet punch would not kill God of War. Um, I should not have switched out there. I'm really 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 frustrated. I did. Uh, since it, he got a heavy hit on my Hiriyama, then I go for a Naga, thinking he would not sack Hiriyama, since he goes for a bullet punch. I couldn't go for a close combat, because that would invite Rotom, and I couldn't go for Earthquake, because that would invite Rotom and Hydreigon. So, you know, that was a series of dumb plays, and um, I switched out, of course, um, the, um, the masterful um, um, Heracross later, because now knockoff won't kill and it goes for an earthquake like that, that <laughs> and of course with my Volcano less effective the flame charge situation where Volcano does actually have speed and breaks asunder two of his mounts um, I should have worked a lot better it should have worked a lot better I'm glad that it went for torment on me thinking I was probably scarfed um, I, I would say it um, it, it would have been fair assuming that but uh, seeing I went for Flame charge would be kind of unlikely, but I can I can appreciate that play, uh, and it also invites me to actually burn the tentacruel and earthquake it at rock polish with Donphan, which actually saves me the game. Like if I wouldn't have pulled off that with Donphan, I would have been utterly destroyed by those series of plays. The thing is, I have the game so early. Like I, that team was not what I was preparing for. I was definitely seeing Miwal and Metagross and being those two really, really stopped Guard War somewhat effectively. Um, and seeing him not bringing those, I thought, oh, I, I sh this is, should be an easy game. But no, we decided to team just about right, and uh, I get two heavy hits on me with the mods that should have been really, really effective for his team uh, with his Hiriyama. So. Xenon takes this game back. Well, I do win it. I won't say I'm, I'm the fair winner since he actually played that last part really nicely. Um, I kind of regret having Donphan with, without Stone Edge uh, since it actually would have swept the team from there on out. I'd optimize for Stealth Rocks thinking me what would be a part of this team. Uh, and I needed that. And um, seeing that I didn't bring it was... Um, well, it's kind of unfortunate, uh, I will say that, and uh, I should be glad that, of course, Tentacruel didn't have Skull, because I do believe Skull combination, um, or had he had Skull, I would not have been able to sweep with the Rock Polish Downfam, because his Shadow Ball would have taken me off with the Rotom, so, you know, that was lucky, uh, that was real lucky. <sighs> such, a, such a weird game, really, I was, uh, I was so scared the whole game, like, I knew things were not going to work well. Once that Hiroyama got those heavy hits, um, <laughs> was so like I was so blown back. I, I was not expecting it either. Um, the the thing is, it, it's a risky series of play that uh, Sinon is doing mostly because losing Hiroyama would effectively mean the guard will wins the match, and um, I think he, I think he knew that too. Like I don't think he was playing dumb there. I really think. He thought that he was in a situation where he could just hope for the best. Like, he knew it was pushed back and was better going for Fire Punch. And it worked. I mean, he was predicting Scissor to come in and Heracross hurts just as much. Uh, says, I was had, I had luckily HP on it, but I'm pretty sure had it been Sheer Force that that would have killed me. Um, so that was risky since actually I, my, 
my funders would not have been able to have speed uh, his nine tails late game. So preserving the scarf Terra Cross was probably the most the most important part throughout this game. And you know, I'll say it as it is. I do believe, like I said, there that Xeno plays a mighty game. Uh, I am lucky to come around top with that series of plays, but I'm really glad it was against Xena because I think we both got to showcase pretty obscure sets and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a really cool game. I can't really say much more than that. Um, and of course, you know, Xenon, this is obviously directed to you. Um, make sure to, that you make playoff. You are a really, really good battler and um, using more unconventional sets here and pushing me back obviously in another fashion that I'm not really used to showcase that you know exactly what you're doing and uh, stuff like that is what make a good battler and uh, I'll, you have to make it you, you simply have to uh, so with all that said I want to thank everybody for watching of course um, we are now at 2-1 two, two, so yeah no we, you know, we, we, we're making it and next time I'm going up against uh, Jack or just me, well, um, and that's a tough game. But I got something in store for him. So, with all that said, I want to thank you, as I said, for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye. <laughs>